Mark the Shark Irwin. Good to see you, my man. Good to be here, my brother. Welcome in. Thank you, Super thank good you. to have you on Fight Week. It's your bare knuckle FC debut. How are we feeling? I'm feeling great. I've had the best camp of my life. I'm in the best shape of my life. I, you know, I've been working with world-class fighters and world-class coaches. I feel blessed. I really couldn't have had a better camp up to this point. So I'm excited and I'm ready to go. Excellent, man. So a lot of people are just meeting you for the first time, right? Let me give them a little history so you don't have to brag about yourself. Two-time state champion, right? Yes, 141, sir. 152 pounds. This is in boxing. You're also 2-0 and as a professional with a knockout. Tell people who haven't met you before, haven't heard your story, who is Mark Irwin? First and foremost, I'm a fighter through and through, inside and outside of the ring. Uh, I'm an entertainer, secondly, and uh, you know, third and finally, I'm someone who had everything, lost it all, and had to uh, work his way back up to get to this point. And uh, you know, I'm excited. Tell me what you're going to bring into that bare knuckle FC ring. Uh, well, I definitely want to bring, like I said, entertainment and a little bit of swagger, and uh, you know the like to the ring. Uh, I'm definitely going to bring the action. You know, I'm an all action fighter. So I'm definitely going to look to push the pace and come forward and uh, put on a show for the fans. Yeah, I got you to hold mitts for me one time and I could tell you like a lot of pressure, uh, very chin, chin down, hands up type of fighter. Um, you know, that'll be really exciting in bare knuckle. But you're a boxer, right? In, I believe it was 1867, Queensbury rules came into play, right? Where we decided, hey, we better put some gloves on these hands. It'll protect the other person's face from cuts. Now you're going bare knuckle. Why not fight with a little more protection? Why bare knuckle fist fights? That's a good question. Um, so, you know, I, uh, I got the idea to start competing in bare knuckle FC. Actually, I was watching YouTube. And uh, I started watching these YouTube fights and I just kind of went down a rabbit hole with it. I probably watched five or six of these bare knuckle FC fights. And I'm sitting there and I'm thinking to myself, I can beat a lot of these guys, right? And then I think the very next day I happen to see on my phone that the organization is having open tryouts in Plant City, Florida, which is about 30 miles outside of Tampa. And uh, I just, I took it as a sign and I, I bought a plane ticket right there and then. I was coming off the couch, so I was fat and out of shape and overweight. I had two weeks to train for it. So I, I trained for two weeks, I got on the plane, I went out to uh, Tampa, Florida. A hundred people signed up for the tryouts, 50 people showed up and they gave out five contracts. I won one of them. And so now here we are. So you were surfing YouTube, where all bad ideas come from. We're surfing YouTube. I've been there, brother, uh, messing around, of course. But what is the attraction for you? Why, when you watched YouTube, did you go, I got to do that? Well, you know, like I said, you know, initially because I knew I had the ability to beat a lot of these fighters. Mm. And then also because of the opportunity that comes along with it. You know, we're still on the tail end of this pandemic and through it all, I've been training and fighting and competing in Tijuana, right? You know, I, I fought in a parking lot of a baseball stadium <laughs> in Tijuana. I fought in the Big Punch Arena, which probably holds about 50 people. <laughs> and now I'm fighting here in Kansas in a arena on pay-per-view that's gonna be seen worldwide. So the opportunity to really go far and wide in the sport is what attracted me to it. Well, obviously, boxing is a huge sport, but when you get up there, you've got like 50 fights, right? I mean, uh, what did Deontay Wilder have? 40 professional wins, uh, you know, versus Tyson Fury around 30, right? So it takes a long time to get up there. So you're see sort of seeing this as a fast track, yes? Exactly. You know, the, one of the big differences between traditional glove boxing and bare knuckle boxing, in addition to obviously less protection, is the fact that you have a much shorter career in bare knuckle. You can't have 40, 50 bare knuckle fights. You, you wouldn't survive it. But uh, therefore, the, uh, the fast lane, so to speak, to, to get to the top is uh, a lot quicker and shorter. So the ability to be in world contention and on the world stage, you know, fighting in front of millions of fans is what really attracted me to getting into this sport. 
Well, that makes perfect sense. I'll still see if I can talk you out of this, Mark. I'm still going to try here. Okay, so you're having a shorter career, more cuts. Um, would you say more knockouts? There's definitely more knockouts in bare knuckle boxing and bare knuckle fighting. Um, I believe, if I'm not mistaken, that the average knockout percentage in bare knuckle fighting is 91%. Okay. And the last event that they put on in Montana went 11 for 11 with finishes. So no judges needed for any of those fights. So it's certainly a lot more dangerous of a sport compared to traditional boxing or MMA. Uh, the likelihood of incurring injury is certainly a lot higher, and I think that's part of the appeal of it too. You know, the uh, animalistic nature of the sport and the violence and the bloodshed that comes along with it. You know, that's what the fans are paying for, I suppose. More exciting. Exactly. Man, more exciting and more on the line, right? I, I almost hate to go here, but we've got to. It's so timely, man. Uh, just recently, somebody passed away. Give me your thoughts on that uh, situation. When did you hear about it? What did you think? Yeah, I, uh, I read the article a couple weeks ago. You know, it's an unfortunate situation, definitely. Uh, you, those are our brothers in arms, right, in the sport. And uh, it's always sad to see someone uh, lose their life in the ring. I think that situation is probably one where that specific individual shouldn't have been there in the first place. Uh, he was coming off of, if I'm not mistaken, five or six knockout losses in a row. He had already been knocked out by this particular fighter who he was facing, and he came in on short notice. You know, so he probably had no business being there in the first place. Uh, but nonetheless, you know, no disrespect to him. You know, it, it takes a real man and a real warrior to get in there and to toe that line. And I have nothing but respect to everybody that does get in there. But you also have to know yourself too, and you have to be able to make calculated risks and understand uh, exactly what you're getting yourself into. And I think there may have been negligence on behalf of the fighter in that respect. So, you know, my condolences to him and his family and loved ones, you know, rest in peace. Um, and uh, hopefully for this event, you know, everybody goes home safely to their families, as I expect that they will. Um, but you have to understand, too, that when you step through those ropes or when you step into that cage, your life is on the line every single time. And, uh, you know, sometimes as spectators and fans and, and, and people in the sport, we can tend to forget that. But, uh, you know, that, that's a real mistake and a real error because you can die at any given moment when you go in there. You're fighting for your life and you're fighting to the death. And so it's important to keep that at the forefront of your mind and uh, to be aware of the inherent dangers that come with this. Heavy stuff, man. Let's talk about your fight. Let's talk about Saturday, okay? Break down your opponent for me. You're opening up the bare knuckle card. You're gonna do it with a bang? Absolutely, yeah. So we're gonna be opening the pay-per-view portion of the card. There will be two or three preliminary bouts that are gonna air on the Bare Knuckle Fighting Championships YouTube page. Uh, and then I will be the first fight on the pay-per-view portion of the card. So, you know, we gotta we got kick it off with a bang. I'm gonna look to get the show started. I'm gonna look to steal the show. You know what I mean? I'm here to make a name for myself and uh, to, uh, to really put myself, make a name for myself and, and stamp my ticket. So I'm, I'm coming for what's mine on Saturday night. What does that mean in terms of your game plan, in terms of your approach? Are you going to try to stay behind a jab, box these guys, or are you just getting in a fist fight on Saturday? Well, I don't want to speak too much to the X's and the O's as far as my uh, strategy is concerned in uh, public interviews, but I'm prepared to take this fight wherever it goes. If he wants to box, I think I can outbox him. If he wants to brawl, I think I can outbrawl him inside, outside, mid-range. You know, we've prepared for everything. We've done our due diligence, and we're ready to go. You're in a stacked division, man, 135 pounds. You got Bedford in there. You got some big names in there. Is that part of the attraction here? You'll have big pay-per-views at this weight class. Absolutely. I think, you know, 35 is my ideal weight class as a professional fighter. Like you alluded to earlier, uh, I had success at 41 and 52. But it's a different sport in the amateurs. You weigh in on the same day. The professional game, you have an extra 24 hours to make weight and then rehydrate and recover and prepare for the fight. So with that, you know, you need to be willing and able to push it a little bit more. Uh, I made my professional boxing debut at 140 and uh, 
have been fighting at 135 cents. I think that is my optimal and ideal weight class. You know, so uh, that is where I, I plan to continue my career. And there definitely is a lot of big names and a lot of big fights to be made, and I'm excited to be involved in those. So you're cutting weight to make 135? Oh, yes, sir, absolutely. In uh, July of this year, I was walking around at a buck 65. Wow. Yeah, so, and I wasn't, I wasn't too fat either at that weight. You know, I wasn't the most body beautiful, but that's a comfortable and healthy weight for me. So it definitely takes time and effort and dedication for me to get down to 35, but uh, that's where I feel best in there. I saw some of the guys you've been training with, man. I know you were a sparring partner for Chito Vera. Of course, that's over at Ruka under Jason Perillo. I've also seen you getting some work in with Cub Swanson and their team. Talk about what it's like training with some of the best MMA fighters in the world, and how does that help you when you take off the gloves and get in there on Saturday? That's a great question. Uh, yeah, it's been a tremendous experience being able to train with these world uh, title contenders and world champions, world championship coaches, uh, and it's definitely elevated my game. Um, one of the motivations that I had for training with these guys is that this sport in particular tends to attract a lot of MMA fighters over to it, more so than traditional boxers, and the style in which that they punch and fight is a lot more akin to mixed martial arts than traditional Western style boxing. So at the start of the camp, we made the decision that we were gonna reach out and use our, uh, our resources to get in contact with these people and get in the training room with these guys to better prepare us for the fight. And uh, it's made a world of difference. So I'm excited to get in there and, and show the results of all that hard work and training that I put in and all the knowledge that I've learned and acquired through this training camp. Give me one specific difference, what it's like going fisticuffs with an MMA fighter versus a boxer. How do they move different? How is their shot selection different? What do you notice? Great question. Uh, the MMA fighters, I think, definitely can be a lot trickier as far as their, their movements and their footwork, more cross-stepping, coming forward, and things like that, which you typically don't see in traditional style boxing. The punches will come from different lines and angles uh, than you might be used to seeing in a traditional boxing match, right? You know, traditional Western boxing, one, two, three, two down the pipe. Sure. A lot of MMA fighters will wing shots over the top, under the bottom, and just throw them from places that you're not used to seeing those punches coming. Mm -hmm. So getting my eyes and my reactions acclimated and prepared for that change in style, I think is gonna pay big dividends on fight night. It seems like in the little gloves, guys punch different, right? Like having the boxing glove, it's kind of harder to fit that thing through there. Although I watched those Tyson Fury highlights, man, when somebody covers up, he always seems to find the shot every single time right through that guard. Do you notice that the actual size of the glove versus your fist is gonna make a tangible difference in how you punch, how your what your shot selection is, what combos you choose to throw? Absolutely, I think actually the biggest difference as far as gloves to no gloves would be on the defensive end of the sport, right? Mm -hmm. One of the benefits of having a big eight ounce glove on your hands is you essentially have a shield to help cover up and block and defend these shots as they're coming in. Uh, it's a lot easier to sneak a MMA glove or even a bare fist through that guard. So it definitely changes the style and technique of, of defense being employed in there. It's not as easy to block shots on the arms, on the gloves, because you don't have them. Mm. So head movement is a lot more imperative. Footwork is a lot more critical and using evasive movement to make the shots miss as opposed to trying to cover up and catch it on the, on the arms, exactly. Got it, so you're using parries, slips, weaves as opposed to your normal blocks which by the way when again when i went to box with you guys that one day i call that mexican style moving forward catching shots on the arms right maybe not the best idea bare knuckle yeah you know we definitely are a uh, a mexican style boxing gym over at bobby's boxing and fitness our head coach and owner bobby chavez uh you know is the uh the point man over there so a lot of stylistic changes as far as defense is concerned. But ultimately, you know, a fighter is who he is, so I'm still gonna be that same guy on the front foot coming forward, making it a fight, and uh, delivering action for the fans. I believe that wholeheartedly, man. 
obviously the, the goal is knockout on Saturday, right? You get that knockout on Saturday, you're in a good spot. Where does Mark the Shark Irwin go from there? That's a great question. Uh, well, I'm hoping to be number one on Sports Center top ten plays of the week on Monday morning. So that's certainly a goal and an aspiration. Uh, after that, we'll uh, reassess where we're at. We'll heal up if any injuries in are incurred, and then we'll get ready to build back up and do it again. Everybody overestimates what they can do in one year and underestimates what they can do in ten years. What does Mark Irwin do in 10 years? 10 years from now, hopefully I'm retired at that point and I've had a career I can look back on and be proud of and use what I've done in this sport as a springboard to the next avenue of opportunity, whatever that might be in business, in life, in relationships and otherwise. So. Last bit for you right here. Give a shout out to fans who are seeing you for the first time. Fans who have followed you already in your boxing career. Friends, family who are going to be watching you. And of course, there's a global audience here. How can they become part of your following, Mark? You can find me on Instagram, Mark the Shark Irwin. Um, and you can find me on Bare Knuckle TV to watch the fights. Uh, shout out to my sponsors, Boss Cat Kitchen and Libations, Argos. Uh, Sean Topper Tattoo, South Shores Building Company, and CBD Health Solutions. Much love, Mark. I really appreciate the time. Thank you for having me, my brother. Godspeed to you on Saturday, my appreciate friend. Appreciate you.